y'all. I'm so happy you picked up this call. Hey, y'all, what up? What's T, y'all? What the fuck is T, my girls? Oh, my God. This Skype call is so needed. We need to key key. First of all, how have you been? I've been away for about two weeks. I know. But I got a big surprise coming for you guys in about a week or so, um, around like the 17th, for a new single that I have been working on, working on the music video. It's been a lot, but I can't wait for you guys to see it. So that's why I've been gone for so long, because I'm coming back for some big things, honey. Okay, 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 okay. Pow, 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 pow. But you know I had to be watching the Grammys. You know I had to watch the Grammys. You know I had to see what's going on. Because first of all, my girl's making history. <laughs> Ooh, y'all faves literally could never. I mean, your faves literally could never. I don't want to talk too much. I want to jump right into the Grammys. I got some tea, and I want to know what you think. Let's talk. But of course, if you don't know me, you've never seen my face before. Hi, my name is Zach Campbell. Nice to see you. If you want to be a part of the Tidus Army, and if you've always been a part, well, welcome back. Thank you for being here. Thank you for picking up the call every time. Okay, so, <laughs> you know I have to write notes. You know me, I have to write my notes. And I want to start off with first, Beyonce wins two Grammys before it even aired. I knew the night was going to be iconic, okay? I knew then the night was going to be iconic. My girl B won two Grammys before the, the before the Grammys even aired, which was four. She got one for Best Traditional R&B for Plastic Off the Sofa and another one for Dance Recording for You Won't Break My Soul. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Rightly deserved. Now, the thing is, right? Now, keep with me. Now, Beyonce needed four wins out of the nine nominations to be, you know, iconic and make history as one of the most, I'm sorry, not the, not one of, the most uh, Grammy Award winning artist in history as a solo performer. There's other people out there, I think like, like 40 Grammys, but they're like in an orchestra or something like that. So Beyonce is the only one of one solo entity, of one person having 32 Grammys. Okay. But let me tell you something. Come here, come here, come here, come here. Let me tell you something, bitch. Because I, I, you know, I kind of feel some type of way, okay? And if this, if this could just be me being paranoid because I'm a weird girl, you know, I get it. But, um, it just feels like the Grammys wanted to kind of soften the blow to the beehive. The Grammys just went off like an hour ago. So I'm filming this right after the Grammys just went off, right? So I'm fresh off the press. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And, and this is just, this is just me. But I feel like the Grammys knew they wasn't going to give Beyonce album of the year because they didn't know. Obviously, they have to vote. You had to know. They know the winners before we know. Something tells me that they said, okay, we're just going to give Beyonce give her four Grammys of the nine nominations so she can make history. So now the Beehive can't be mad at us because we're not going to give her the album of the year. Mm -hmm. So I just felt, am I wrong? I just felt like the girls was trying it behind the scenes. And, you know, it is what it is. Like, can't we really complain? Because we, we won, you know, we are historic. And as a fan base, our fave is like, untouchable yeah i understand that but like you know credit is doing its due but we'll talk about it in a second you know what i mean but i want to just preference this whole call with the grammys be still scamming uh-huh uh-huh now another thing i thought um i thought beyonce was going to perform Mm-hmm. i thought beyonce was going to perform i really did but it's only because i don't know if it was a rumor or if it was i don't know if it was fake or whatever because it, it definitely clickbaited me it's the reason why i was watching the whole three-hour situation girl going through people's performances that were tired oh god but we, ugh, we'll talk about that in a second too however i didn't think beyonce was going to perform because they said and the rumor said and it, like it came from twitter so take it with a grain of salt None. but i remember she had or the twitter had said that the Grammys have said. <laughs> I feel like I'm playing telephone girl. They said, Twitter has said that the Grammys have said that it was gonna be a, uh, a surprise performance by a big superstar woman. Uh, and so people were like, oh my God, is it Taylor Swift? Is it um, Beyonce? Is it Adele? Like who, cause it's only a handful of superstar bitches that can really bring in a crowd that we call Superstar. <laughs> so, like, we can't just call everybody. So, it gotta be either Gaga, Beyonce, Rihanna, Nikki, Taylor. Yeah, that's about it. Adele. Anybody else? I don't know who you could be talking about. So, I'm thinking, like, it gotta be B because she hasn't performed real songs nowhere. But I'm happy she didn't perform because for obvious reasons, because she was snubbed. But we won't talk about it. And giving them a free performance and all that promo. Girl, please. <laughs> Ooh, my hair coming undone, bitch. <laughs> That's how gagged I was, girl. My speculation was because she was late. And I was like, you know, when Beyonce late, she either taking pictures, putting them kids down, or like, 
doing something she got a business doing, aka backstage planning for a performance. Maybe that's just what my mind wanted to hear, so. <laughs> that could just be what I wanted to hear. But still, girl, thought a performance was happening. The night goes on, the dream goes up and, and accepts Beyonce next third Grammy win, which is for Cuff It for Best R&B Song. It goes up and says, and I quote, now y'all know niggas be on CP time. Beyonce says, thank you, goodbye. <laughs> I live for the dream for that, cause that's so true. Cause you know they, you know they good Judys. You know they've been writing records since 2007, girl. So it's just like you know he knows B for real, for real. So he probably was like, she literally probably got dressed, hated it, changed it again. I should call KJ like, girl, what really happened? What took y'all so long to get to the Grammys, girl? I'm probably sure my girl was like, mm mm, my titties don't look good in this. I need to look good. I need, I need to look busty. I'm winning. I'm making history tonight. I didn't look busty. <laughs> I live for Beyonce and KJ. I live. And I just feel like that's what she was doing in my mind. And telling the twins and Blue, like, hey, y'all like this? <laughs> or maybe she was on the wait list for like Ticketmaster and trying to figure out why she ain't got no tickets to her own concert. Uh-oh. Yeah. You can't tell I'm bothered by that as a Beehive member that registered for, you know, being a part of the Beehive and being selected by lottery to win tickets to i'm sorry not win buy tickets to a tour and i just want to know where all these people came from this is a very side rant i just want to know where all these people came from where did all you people come from like in renaissance all of a sudden why all y'all want to go see the want to go to the tour i come so mad i can't even get it out why do y'all want to go to the tour so bad i don't this is not time this tour is not for the people that want to take my girl on a date I, I, I. This ain't your tour. This is not your tour to go take your girlfriend and go see Beyonce because this is your, because you cheated on her so you want to make up and, you know, vogue a little bit. Ah, uh -uh. this ain't for you. You take your ass to another concert and y'all go do that. Because where was y'all at? Where was all y'all at buying Renaissance the album for the first week's sales? She did, she did very well. When number, it was number one. We did over 300K. However, comma. With all these people registered for the concert, where was y'all at buying Renaissance? I just want to know. Because we did. The Beehive had to do what we had to do. So we should get first dibs. I'm just saying Ticketmaster girl, the people that's in the back talking about some, that just casual Beyonce goers and want to go see if Beyonce just perform a little bit girl. This ain't, this tour ain't for you. This tour ain't for you. And just, I find, I feel like you should go to another show or wait till she come up with something a little bit more, you know, catered to you. This tour is for the girls, okay? This tour is for the Beehive for real. Cause if you're gonna stand there and, when you see stars, when, when you, You, you at the wrong show, baby. Because we, we having a damn near. We're having, I'm telling you, at each concert, it's damn near going to be a ball. Okay? I'm just saying. The girls are... Girl, don't get me started. But I just had to let that out really, really quickly. Because I just feel like I'm on the waiting list still to buy a ticket. Mm -hmm. Yeah, even me. I know, girl. But you best believe the girls will be there regardless. Okay, you know me. So Beyonce is still late at this point. Everybody looking for Beyonce. Even Lizzo looking for Beyonce. <laughs> Lizzo looking around like, girl, where is Beyonce at, girl? What is going on? And she finally shows up looking stunning as ever, which I wanted to point out a note. I don't know if y'all seen this, but she finally did show up um, when Jay-Z was trying to offer her a, a shot of like, I think it looked like it was Duce. And Beyonce said, this is, this is Beyonce to Jay. As the camera is right here, by the way. Beyonce is so, you gotta roll the clip, roll the clip, roll the clip. Uh-huh. <laughs> Welcome back to the Grammys, everybody. You know, when you equal a record, there's no way you don't get to hold your Grammy <laughs> in your hand and celebrate that. And the queen is a fit. Baby, yeah, she said, Jay, now you know these cameras on me. I'm not about to get, you, they gonna get, catch me drinking and getting lit real quick. You could have waited, give me a shot later. Boy, she just, I just, I could feel the motherly energy. Beyonce is such a black woman at core. Like she, a, oh, Beyonce is such a black woman at the core. Let me say something randomly. Black women just know how to communicate through face and eyes. I don't know if any other race of women could do that. For real. I feel like my Latin mamas do the same thing, for real, for real. But I really feel like black women have it down lock. When they can, they can communicate the severity of what they're going through. 
without letting the rest of the world know, but just for you to know what I'm talking about. Why you got me? Why you, put, why you giving that cup to me right now? Why the camera's right here and they about to introduce me? Don't put that goddamn cup down right now, please. I, 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 Sean, put the damn cup down. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Thank you. <laughs> Husband and wife, just black woman. Oh, she a mama. Beyonce is a black mama to the core. Like, you can tell she know how to communicate. I just appreciated that moment because I saw the marriage. Like, Sean, don't play with me right now. Do not do this. <laughs> In a loving way, though. Most loving way ever. But you could tell, that's my girl. That's my girl. And Sean said, oh, excuse me. <laughs> happy wife, happy life. He knows. And speaking of my home girl, Lizzo, shout out to you, mama. I love you so much. Listen, my girl Lizzo actually made history also, if you girls did not know. Oh, yes, Lizzo won record of the year. Hold that thought. Before I talk about record of the year, song of the year had me twisted because I thought Lizzo was going to win song of the year because about damn time deserved. But like, I forgot my baby name because she, she looked like a sweet lady. Uh, uh, she was Ro if Rogue from X Men and Reba McIntyre had a child, this is how that lady would be. And she was gagged that she won in the first place too. But I guess her song was for a really good cause. Don't get me a line about what the cause was. I don't, I don't know if it was autism. It was a sickening cause about her song, and she said that the song was for something sickening to help people. So, hey, she did what she needed to do for the world and she was rewarded for it. So congratulations to her. Whatever her name is, Madison put her name right here because I don't want to be disrespectful. Congratulations, but we all gagged, no shade. I, I, I was like, why did she win this? But she won for a good cause. So I love that for the Grammys recognizing her. Moving on, right? So Lizzo finally gets her moment because I said, now if Lizzo don't win record of the year, I know something. I'm sorry. About damn time deserved. About damn time, just like Renaissance, was a record that need like break my soul, I should say. Just like break my soul, about damn time was a record that ignited that happiness, that that euphoric human nature. You know, us as humans are all inherently good. You know, kind of nature. And it brought us into that. And I felt like About Damn Time needed to be recognized as that record that got everybody out their feet, up that mood of, yeah, bitch, I'm sick of being in the house. And you know, it's about damn time I got my shit together and I'm happy now. But nonetheless, Lizzo won record of the year, which has not been won by a black woman since 1994, since Whitney Houston's I Will Always Love You, which is insane to me. And shout out to my 90s babies, you know, my 94 babies, hey girl. Yeah, that's insane. And so, it was so beautiful to see Lizzo win. And also, Lizzo's speech, I wanted to cry because you know, it's my girl from Detroit. And it, it it was a lot. I saw me up there. And as an artist, your job as an artist, at least what you want to do as an artist is to inspire and be a beacon of light for people that you come from. You know what I mean? And, and that very moment, I've always felt, felt inspired by Lizzo. That's my girl. I love her down. However, that one specific moment while her accepting her Grammy, I felt so seen. And it was about her, it was her moment. But because she is so, that beacon of light for people like me from Detroit or from Houston, I saw Melissa accept that award. And of course Lizzo, but Lizzo is Melissa, but just the humility in her showed in that acceptance speech and then she did what any beehive member will do in that time when beyonce is sitting right here and you're winning a goddamn grammy I, I need to just take this moment to acknowledge beyonce which also lets me know like just beyonce like wow like wow you know you that girl when girls take time out of their a winning time to acknowledge you like girl wrote a clip beyonce whoo In the fifth grade, I skipped school to see you perform. <laughs> My sister, she got me out of school. It was literature, I'm good. And um, where are you at, Beyonce? My eyes are wet. <laughs> you changed my life. You, you sang that gospel medley, and the way you made me feel, I was like, I wanna make people feel this way with my music. So thank you so much. You clearly are the artist of our lives. I love you, God bless y'all. We got a Grammy! 
it was so good to see like Beyonce stand there and like she found Beyonce and ah, hey girl and to see Beyonce be happy and tell her like girl don't make it about me but like Lizzo like girl no I need to tell you I skipped school to see you like and you are the artist of our lives and bitch I love you <laughs> and thank you for being sickening and I feel that I love that it was just one of the best acceptance speeches of the night besides my queen can we talk about it my girl wins that fourth grammy for best dance electronic album and her speech probably one of the best award speeches like award accepted speeches i've heard ever and once again i don't know what it was but beyonce once again just I saw Beyonce up there. I saw the child, the inner child, finally feel like you did it. Cause I let me roll the clip first before I talk. Let me roll the clip. Let's 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 watch the let's watch the speech together. Thank you so much. I'm trying not to be too emotional. And I'm trying to just receive this night. Let him use ya. Let him use ya. Mm. I want to thank God for protecting me. Thank you, God. I'd like to thank my Uncle Johnny, who's not here, but he's here in spirit. I'd like to thank my parents, my father, my mother, for loving me and pushing me. I'd like to thank my beautiful husband, my beautiful three children who are at home watching. I'd like to thank the queer community for your love and for inventing this genre. God bless you. Thank you so much to the Grammys. Thank you. Her speech is a class act. That's a class act right there. First of all, I wanted to shout out Beyonce and Parkwood. And I say this a lot behind the scenes. I don't know if I said it on camera about Renaissance, but one, for her to thank God is amazing, but also for her to thank the queer community and let the world know in that moment about Dance Electronic, how it originated from us and the queers. And that was our down low, like that was our underground music. You know what I mean? Like we funk, disco, electronic dance like that's us vogue like come on now girl like and for her to show it and tell the world like the authentic the authentic the authenticity of this genres from the queers from our from our from the queer culture i wanted to bring this up because i don't know if people give beyonce the tens that she deserves as far as this and i'm not saying this because i'm a stan but i'm saying this because i respect the artistry of beyonce right in the sense of she didn't just nod to the community. She didn't just give us homage, you know, give us a taste, like, here you go. She didn't just use it to inspire. That baby did her homework. The writers, the composers, the producers, the engineers, everybody at Parkwood and worked, everybody that worked on this album did their homework about what queer culture is, what ballroom culture is, what real disco is. You know what I mean? Like where it really came from. Beyonce did the homework for real, for real. And she didn't just appropriate it. She did it. She brought us to the table. And the thing is, I want, you know, some people in the back was like, well, Beyonce just want to be gay because she know gay people go buy her music. The thing is, Beyonce been doing this since 2004, 2005, 2006, really, of showing the girls in the mainstream. And was one of the first black women to really do it for real. And like, didn't care. Besides like Whitney Houston. Like, don't get me wrong. Whitney Houston, she knew. Whitney Houston knew. But Beyonce really always showed love for us. Even in the records, even in the music videos, she always knew who she was singing to. Because of, maybe Uncle Johnny was the one that inspired that. That gave her that knowledge of, girl, you gotta be fierce, you know? And... I don't think people understand the reason why Beyonce's win, this historic win, it means a lot for the black community. And let me tell you why. Because I don't know if this whole, like, Beyonce's overrated and I don't get it. 
the hype. What I don't, the people that say that, this is my thing to you. What I want to say is, for us as black people, because I have the honor and the, the privilege of growing up with Beyonce for real, like watching her career from the start to now. And Beyonce was our beacon of light when hip hop and black culture was not the mainstream. We've always been the culture, all okay? right? Know that. We've always been the uh, the 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 culture and 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 the um, the trend starters. Black people are all in hip hop, especially, has always been that. But at a time where black mainstream was not really a thing, Beyonce was our girl that we was like, all oh, y'all, we got Beyonce. <laughs> you know what I mean? And Aaliyah was that too. Uh huh. Uh huh. But when we lost Aaliyah, Beyonce really got pushed on the front of that because Beyonce could, like Aaliyah, could go play with the white folk and go take it over and go be the representation for us hood girls. Okay, let me tell you something. Destiny's Child and all that was for us. I'm talking about Beyonce was the jive girl, the ebony girl. Like, and I'm talking about the magazines back then. The Jet, that was Beyonce. That's how the hood knew Beyonce as that pretty uh, uh, caramel uh, girl that could sing, dance, and had the body, but could also be so sickening and so talented enough to go compete with the white folk and give us the representation that we always wanted. So to see her, the, to be this worldly artist and this great musician and now the most awarded Grammy winner of all time as an artist, it's one of those things that like really resonate with the culture, man. And that the fact that Beyonce can keep making records that resonates with the culture, like Renaissance, is the reason why it should have been Album of the Year, but let's talk about that, okay? Now, before I talk about Album of the Year and that whole situation, because I got some opinions, let's talk about the Grammys performances. Really, really quickly, I wasn't going to react to any because I wasn't impressed, to be quite honest. The only one that really made, got me, like, yes, was Lizzo, but that's because that was my girl, and I loved the song special, and I loved hearing her vocals, and I love when Lizzo just sings because that bitch can blow the house down, okay? So I really appreciated seeing Lizzo just blow and make you bitches be like, oh, let's take it to church, the cold church, okay? Like, let's really do it, bitch. <laughs> I shouldn't say church and bitch in the same sentence, but I did. Ah, I'm unholy. But speaking of that too, man, Harry Styles' performance, it was cute, but let me say something. I don't think, I've seen Harry Styles perform better, and I think Harry Styles was either tired from tour, because his whole aura the whole night was kind of off. Like, I don't know. Like, it just didn't feel like Harry Styles, the goofy, you know, carefree, exuberant person. It gave, like, I just want to go home and go to sleep. <laughs> so, vocally, he sounded tired. He sounded vocally tired. So... I don't know. I just, I didn't, I wasn't moved by that performance at all. Stevie Wonder's performance was really good, though. The hip-hop tribute situation was cute. But if I had to be completely honest, I'm not a, I am a Barb. <laughs> I'm an honorary Barb. I forgot. So I have to say this. Nikki should have been on that stage. I said what I said. I said what I said. Nikki should have been on that stage. There is no way we're going to celebrate 50 years of hip-hop without Nicki Minaj. You can do what you can say what you want. I know she can be a bitch. I know she can be rude. I know she can be hard to work with, blah, 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 blah. However, comma, the impact that she's done on this culture when it comes to hip hop being mainstream the way it is today would not be the same if it was not for Onika Mirage. Mirage. I do feel like, and I understand she probably talked her way out of being at the Grammys, okay? And the nomination, she probably fucked it all up with that mouth. However, comma, I feel like she should have been there to celebrate 50 years of hip hop because her contribution to hip hop and the culture of hip hop is one of the biggest, if not the biggest for female hip hop and hip hop in general. So I just felt like that's where y'all messed up at Grammys for that. I don't know what beef you and Nicki got for real, but that beef should have been a little subsided. Just be like, Nicki, we'll pay you whatever. We need you to come do this. We, we, it, would feel, it would feel wrong if we didn't give you the accolades that you deserve. But that's neither here or there. I'm just, I'm just saying. I'm not here to piss nobody off, but I'm just speaking my mind, you know? As for Sam Smith and for Kim Petras, the performance of Unholy. I love this song. I, I, and I know a lot of you don't like Unholy. I live for this. That's one of the best pop records I've heard in a long time, besides Away From You. I, <laughs> okay. 
I live for Unholy. I think that it gives me that old underground gay club feeling that I love. With that being said, the performances, I'm sick of them. I don't know what it is. I don't know why. I know my baby Sam don't dance like that. They don't really live for, you know, busting a one, a, a A count. Like, they ain't into that like that. Like, Sam not gonna give you all of that. Sam's gonna give you a pose, a beautiful vocal, and that's it. So I'm not expecting my bitch to like come out and just give me straight Britney Spears choreography. No, 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 no. But what I do want, I would just live for some move, like, even if you could've just gave me you in the center, right? Like you did how, how like, how they were in the center, dude, like seance -y. It was very seance and sell my soul, devil, devil, worship, devil worshiper moment, no shade. If you're gonna give me all of that, right? Why don't you have the girls, like the dancers come in and you give me right in the center. You're in the center of the girls, right? They, they all around you. And you, lucky, lucky girl. Huh? Do you got married to a boy like you? Uh. And get you out if you ever, ever knew about out of, you tell me that you do. And lucky, lucky boy, you know everyone is talking on the scene. I hear them whisper about the places that you've been and how you don't know how to keep your business clean. Like, if you're going to give me standing there give me move like give me movement like really get in it like you know like i don't know i just felt like the dancers could they i don't i didn't like the little at the bunny like i don't know i just didn't like it i just and, and then kim in the cage the whole time i feel like kim should have came out of some horns or something like out of a birthday cake uh, uh, even if you're gonna be in the cage have a riser come out of the cage like y'all got the thing is this, what pisses me off is that you bitches got these budgets. Y'all got these big budgets. Use them. Like, come on, man. Shout out to, uh, Vic, uh, what's my baby name? Got Mick and shout out to uh, Violet Chashki. I think they were on stage. Beautiful gals. I just wish that Unholy got the performance it really deserves. I just think that every performance of Unholy has been kind of stale in a sense in my opinion it doesn't live up to what the song potential is like the song is so sickening i just feel like y'all should have really been like oh uh, uh, we go we go you know like you know what i mean like really give it to me like i don't know anywho speaking of sam and speaking of kim congratulations on making history again somebody else made history girl another historical win kim now is the first trans openly trans artist to win a Grammy and I got a little teary-eyed because it was beautiful once again to see somebody work their careers and their asses off and finally get the acknowledgement because I've seen people tell Kim that girl I don't see it far for you besides you performing at a gay club at a pride and that's it for you and it happened for her now you can say what you want about Kim Petras I know people have a lot of uh, different opinions about Kim and Sam but I think that it was very very good to see both of them win you know Although, I do hope that we can have the same kind of grace and acceptance for black queer artists. That's all I'm saying. I'm just saying, you know, as a Grammy out there, for the Grammys and to the Academy, I really hope this doesn't stop at just like white queer artists. I really hope that black queer artists can come and win Grammys too. That's all I'm saying. That's all. Okay, moving on. Now my last situation now, right? Now the album of the year. We're here. My heart's pounding. My heart's pounding. I'm gagging. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what to expect. I'm thinking Renaissance got this. Like, I'm like, Renaissance got this. Like, Beyonce's on a roll. She won four already. Like I said, the Grammys could have been tired. It was like, we're going to give her this four. And then, like, if we don't get, we're not going to give her this. So, we know. Harry's house wins for album of the year. Now, I like Harry. I know some people are like, why the fuck does white boy win? Like, I, I, uh, I like Harry. I get into Harry's. I like Harry's house. Harry's house was a good album, in my opinion. But it wasn't Renaissance. I said what I said. I think Harry's house was a good album. I think the other wins that he got for Harry's house makes so much sense. The nominations he got makes sense. He deserves it all. But album of the year, this is what really threw it off for me. Like I said, Harry Styles, his aura was already off and weird. But he then gets on stage and says something along the lines of a paraphrase, along the lines of things like this don't happen for people like me. Can we roll that clip? I just want to make sure I said it right. This is what he said actually for his acceptance speech. 
This doesn't happen to people like me very often, and this is so, so nice. Thank you very, very much. I don't get that, because Harry, you white. <laughs> you white. White people, especially white men, y'all win this category. You're white. So you're going to win. You're white. I don't know what you, what, if people like you, do you have something you need to tell us, Harry? Do you have something you need to say? There's something about you we don't know yet. Because baby, from the surface, you're white and a white male. So what you mean people like you don't win, shawty? Because you win all the time. This planet, this earth, this America is open for you to win. You ain't even from America and you reaping the benefits. Girl, so what are you saying? I just didn't understand that. I don't, mm -mm, that was a chop for me at that very point. And something got me thinking. I said, okay, Grammys, now I gotta look at you. Now I was, I was, I was on it with the Grammys this year. I said, okay, the Grammys is giving black, black because my girl Tim's won her first Grammy. Shout out to Tim's. Kendrick Lamam swept up his Grammys. Shout out to Kendrick. It, I was living for my black people. They were winning. Shout out to Viola Davis becoming an EGOT that night. It was amazing. However, comma, I felt like the Grammys said, we can't let this bitch Beyonce take everything. She always gets everything. Cause I remember somebody wrote an article from the Grammys, from the who Reverend, from the judging panel or from the Academy. Said something along the lines in an article, if I'm not mistaken, don't quote me, I could be wrong, but I feel like I read this. Somebody said, you know, we don't wanna give, you know, Beyonce everything. She she wins everything all the time. And they wanna they don't make it wanna make it seem like it's unfair. But I'm like, it was very electoral college and popular vote. I felt like they gave it to Harry Styles because they didn't want to give Beyonce that much credit that night. She already made history and then she got album of the year. That's too much for a black woman, even for Beyonce. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. That's what it feels like. Let me, let me, I'm just sick and tired of black people and black entertainers having to work four times as hard, five, six times as hard sometimes as the next bitch. And when I said the next bitch, I mean the white counterparts. I'm really sick of it. It's not fair, it's not cute. It just goes to show me that even Beyonce, you know, the top of the totem pole when it comes to black entertainment, will still get looked at like, you black, so we can't give you everything. But we can get as white people over here everything because you know, they're white. So like, you know, majority, minority, you get it? That's just what it felt like to me. I could be wrong, I could be speaking from feeling, but I just feel like the Grammys, I am speaking from feeling, but I do feel like the Grammys said to call everybody down to the black community and Beehive, we'll let her make history. We'll give her that. But winning album of the year, mm, that's too much. That's too much, we can't, let, we can't let this black woman win everything. That's just how I feel. I just could be wrong, but that's how I feel. All in all, the Grammys was a cute night. I enjoyed it. I, I went to a couple things for Grammy week. I don't want to go to the Grammys yet until, I could've went this year, but I didn't want to go until I'm working the Grammys in some way or performing or nominated. Until then, the Grammys won't see me. I just feel like I want to be there for purpose. You know, not just to be there because I'm there. Like, I don't know, that's just how I feel. But I really enjoyed it. I'm so happy for everybody that won. Everybody that won, you definitely deserve it. Congratulations. Or even Harry, even Harry Styles. Congratulations, girl. The album of the year was definitely, I know my album of the year. I know my album of the year. It's Renaissance, so. Even down to Beyonce's remixes. Nobody else can do remixes like Beyonce. Like she makes, she, I think she even added the Cuff, Cuff It Wetter remix to the Renaissance track list. So uh, by the way, if you want to see the Cuff It Wetter remix um, reaction, it's gonna be on Patreon exclusively for my Tidus Patreon members. If you're a part, you, are, you can go watch it, but if you're not, you should go ahead and subscribe to the Titus Patreon family because we have the Cuff It Wetter remix already on Patreon. So, yes. <laughs> but yeah, I just felt like, you know, even down to that, like she just continues to even build on Renaissance. And But congratulations to all the winners. Congratulations to all the winners, even Harry Styles, even though I know what my album of the year is. Okay. <laughs> All right, Tyler's on my I love you guys watching. As always, let me know in the comments below what you guys think about this year's Grammys. I told you this is going to be a lengthy call. This is a lengthy call, I know. But I told you we had to kiki. We had to talk. Period. <laughs> All right, Tyler's on my I love you guys watching. As always, I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye, Army.